At the end of the day, football is a form of entertainment, but how entertaining has your championship side been this season? We are going to be putting exactly that to the test in today's video and throwing each of these championship sides into the following tier list, ranking them on how entertaining I believe they've been this season. Categories we've got, champagne football, play some great stuff, hit and miss, not great, or sending me to sleep. Your championship club this season, where would you personally place them? This is in my opinion though, and without any further ado, let's jump in. I think we'll start out with Watford because they're some way in the middle of the road for me. I'm going to put them in hit and miss. When I watch a Watford game, I think I'm more so watching it for the individuals rather than the overall performance that we get from Watford, which has been a little bit hit, hit and miss throughout the season, obviously. Three different managers in there, three different styles so far this season. I think one of the reasons that Bilic ultimately became undone was because he couldn't really knit together a cohesive style of play. But what they do have have as redeeming factors are Saar and especially Jao Pedro who are some of the most entertaining players to watch in the championship. Going to their rivals Luton Town, I'm going to put them in the tier above and say they play some great stuff. Whenever I've caught a Luton game this season, I've been thoroughly entertained when they rocked up at Deepdale earlier in the season as well. I think Luton are just everything that I'd want from my championship side. It's a team who works hard, but tactically, I think they've evolved even this season under Edwards. Got some great talents throughout the spine of that team as well and generally speaking I think they play some great stuff. In terms of a team who's massively fallen off lately I'm going to put QPR into not great. Now I actually did this same video I think over a year now and I went ahead and revisited that one before I made today's video and when I was discussing QPR um, over a year ago I think I had them in the top category. They played some of the most attractive football in the league but that's all sort of been sucked out of them this season. The overall energy around the club obviously managerial change hasn't gone ahead and helped that and at the start of the season I could see what they were doing under Beal but lately especially you know in the calendar year of 2023 barring a little bit of stardust from Chair, maybe something from Willock there's really not that much entertainment value with this QPR side at the moment for me at least. Blackburn a bit of a funny one to judge I'm going to chuck them into hit and miss to be fair there have been some occasions where I have been thoroughly entertained by a Blackburn match but a lot of the underlying numbers suggest that they are one of those sides who are a little bit of a you know one punch knockout where they'll score that goal and then sort of set up shop a little bit whereby they're very good at holding on to leads but don't create an abundance of chances per game but when things do click and they do have some players I quite like watching uh, Brereton Diaz, Dolan always exciting with the footwork and they've got some nice and tidy players in midfield as well but throughout the entire season Blackburn and entertainment value, I'd say is a little bit hit and miss for me personally. Overall for Wigan, oh, I'm tempted to chuck them into sending me to sleep. I like what you know they've tried to do recently in becoming a little bit more uh, settled and stable at the back but ultimately when I'm watching that team there just doesn't seem to be that adequate championship quality dotted throughout the entire spine of that side and you know they've bounced around from different ideas throughout the season but generally speaking I don't think there's been a great value of entertainment factor goal scored from open play um, there haven't been an abundance of those either opposite end of the spectrum Burnley champagne football they can just hurt you from so many angles and I hate to admit that as a Preston fan but it is true tactically I think they've been brilliant this season under Vincent Company. how he's been able to completely transform that side from what they were previously under Sean Dyche they're capable of scoring brilliant team goals goals from outside the box goals from tricky wingers cut it inside and bend it into the top corner they've just got a little bit of everything and yeah by far and away they have been the most entertaining side in the league haven't they do you know what Norwich City under David Wagner maybe not under Dean Smith but I am going to say play some great stuff especially when they do get that trio um, fully on song in the final third. Norwich have got some brilliant individuals and now that you know Sarah especially is really starting to come into his own in a Norwich shirt Hernandez are really like 1v1 up against people. Dowell's look more confident I and mean, when you've got the likes of you know Pookie and Sargent chipping in with the goals Norwich 
at their best, I'm always quite entertained by. Millwall, where do I place them? I'm going to chuck them into hit and miss. It's a Gary Rowett team at the end of the day. There have there has been a real evolution of Millwall, I think, throughout the Rower era. You know, they've come a long way from that side that he originally inherited and how I think a lot of people sort of typecast as Millwall as a, you know, they play one brand of football and that's it. They have been a little bit more adaptable over these last couple of years. There are still those performances I do see from them time to time where they can be a little bit passive, you know, if they get themselves into a leading situation and they do shut up shop and that comes back to bite them. But with the summer recruitment especially, I've quite enjoyed watching, I've probably enjoyed watching Millwall more so this season than I have done in previous years, but there are still some elements of their game which aren't overly enter entertaining. It is a Gary Rowett side at the end of the day. Blackpool, I'm going to put them into not great, not quite sending me to sleep. I think the redeeming factors that Blackpool have in their side in terms of entertainment value are some of the tricky wingers that they've got. Um, I know Keshi Anderson hasn't really featured for them this season, but Bowler, even though he hasn't been that is sparkling best since January, still capable of getting you up and out of your seat. A few other of the tricky wingers they've got in that side as well. And generally speaking, considering they are down at the bottom of the championship, have scored quite a few goals from open play especially. And that, I think, is a redeeming factor for me to not put them into the bottom category. But yeah, Mick McCarthy ball, it's not great to watch, is it? Another one that's a little bit of an opinion splitter, Swansea. I'm going to put them into not great. When it does come off for them, this high possession football, they try to do and they do score a goal from back to front playing out from the back it can be absolutely brilliant you know Joel Perot someone who I love watching when he is on form but this season especially that's just fallen apart on so many occasions when they have caught Swansea that at a lot of the season they probably have been sending me to sleep and I'm sure a lot of other people would put them into that category. High possession football definitely isn't for everyone. When they do pull it off it looks quite nice but more often than not it's not been great this season for Swansea in terms of entertainment value. Rotherham I'm going to say a little bit hit and miss. They do have the they do have the tendency from time to time to be a little bit passive where they sort of sit back in, soak up a lot of pressure and have a lot of shots bombarded at them and so if you're watching a football match for Rotherham them. You don't see much of them from those types of performances, but overall there are quite a few redeeming factors that I do like about this Rotherham side. Certainly this season compared to previous Rotherham sides in years gone by, I think there's been a little bit more quality, dare I say, in this Rotherham team this season, which has allowed them to go ahead and stay above that dotted line for the majority of the year so far. Coventry, I'm going to say play some great stuff. Always quite enjoy watching Coventry. Um, the individuals they have especially are always capable of getting you out of your seat. Gustav Hamer is just a you know a favourite of mine um, since Coventry snapped him up and Jokeres this season especially. Whilst he's not always the most prolific in terms of you know every chance he gets it ends up in the back of the net. In terms of pure entertainment factor I can't think of many other forwards who I'd rather watch on a weekly basis than Jokeres. He's capable of crafting out a chance for himself out of absolutely nothing. I think in terms of like dribbles carries into the box this season he's topping all of those statistics and generally speaking, I think commentary have been a lot of fun to watch. Well, I know they've had a little bit of a tail off in form in 2023, but thinking about the individuals they have, some of the mad games they've been involved with throughout the season as well, more often than not, I'd say Sunderland play some great stuff. Um, the way that Tony Mowbray obviously took on that side from Alex Neal, tried to go ahead and evolve them. I think what has held them back is that injury to Ross Stewart, and maybe after that you'd say they've been a bit more hit and miss, but over the course of the entire season, I'm always quite satisfied after watching a Sunderland match in terms of entertainment value. Diallo's always capable of coming up with a moment or two, Roberts and Clark as well, and a few other, other players in there. Yeah, I'm going to say Sunderland play some great stuff, I always quite like them. My team Preston North End, I mean I hate to admit it but I'm tempted to say sending me to sleep. In terms of pure entertainment value this season, at Deepdale especially, it probably has been one of the worst brands of football we've sort of been served up in terms of goal mouth action, moments that have got us out of our seat since we've been up in the championship. Um, you know, I can pretty much count the amount of goals we've scored from open play especially at Deepdale this season on one hand and um, we've been that wasteful in the final third. There have been occasions where I have liked more what we've been doing. You know, I've Fernando, someone who's capable of getting me up and out of my seat, Daniel Johnson when he's on form and things like that. 
but generally speaking throughout this season, it's been a little bit turgid. Speaking of low scoring sides, Cardiff, not someone who I've regularly been tuning into in terms of whenever they've been on TV or anything like that. I've been rushing to get the remote and go, okay, I have to watch this Cardiff match. Similar vein to Preston, they've really struggled for goals this season and ultimately that's what brings the entertainment value. Sheffield United, I mean, they do play some great stuff. Do they quite play champagne football to the same level that Burnley do? Not quite sure if they've got that same entertainment factor for me personally, but yeah, they've been a brilliant watch this season, the Blades, haven't they? You know, it has been Burnley and Sheffield United, the top two for the vast majority of the season, and anything less than that I don't think would be right for this side this season. Um, in terms of how good Elimina Dye has been to watch this season, Norwood continuing to pull the strings for them in midfield. Um, at Bramall Lane especially, yeah, Sheffield United play some really nice stuff. Hull City, going to put them into hit and miss, uh, especially under Rossini. I've liked the way they've sort of tactically evolved under him and they have had some real notable performances. Thinking about that one away at Wigan, especially when they put four goals past them. They've tightened things up at the back, but there are also some individuals I like to watch out for. And generally speaking, the style of play has been pretty clean under Rossini as well. Reading this season, ah. Oh. I mean, it's bottom two, I think, for Reading. Are they sending me to sleep? The only thing that redeems it a little bit, because Paul Inspall, generally speaking, isn't great, and I think a lot of Reading fans would testify to that as well, but they have been involved in some pretty wacky games this season, whether it be Reading upsetting the apple cart by pulling off a result at home, or just the fact that they've been battered on a few occasions as well. That maybe brings up the entertainment value a little bit, but in terms of the football itself that Reading have played, it's not blowing anyone's socks off. West Brom under Corberan, I'm going to say play some great stuff, I really like West Brom, I like especially how aggressive they are in the first half an hour of games of really trying to go after teams, there have been some fragilities in that side, you know, an issue with the goalkeeping department in the first few months of the season and later on as well, but even that brings a little bit of entertainment value to the table as well with West Brom. Birmingham sort of fallen off, I'm going to put them into not great, if you were to have asked me that in the first couple of months of the season. I would have had them in a tier higher than this, thinking about, um, you know, Bakuna I enjoy watching, Hannibal Chong. There are the elements in that Birmingham side to be quite entertaining, but generally speaking, I'd say I've seen more games of Birmingham this season when I've been left a little bit dissatisfied than games that have had me on the edge of my seat over a full 90. Stoke, I'm going to say a little bit hit and miss. I think at their best under Alex Neal, they are capable of being quite entertaining. And I'm starting to see a little bit of a blueprint of the side that Neil sort of put together with North End in terms of how he wants this Stoke side to be playing. But like we mentioned on countless championship rounds up, it has been sort of one step forward, one step back a lot of the time for Stoke. But when they do nail things, they do have it in them to be quite entertaining, like Tyrus Campbell especially. Huddersfield, not a great watch this season in terms of the overall year I'm thinking about the Fotheringham days especially I think because that those performances have stuck in my head more so than anything I think I saw more of Huddersfield this season while Fotheringham was at their helm and there have just been so many turgid performances that I think of even when they've been doing the championship round but watching extended highlights and things like that and trying to get some positives out of the way that Huddersfield were playing um, throughout that time but yeah there have been quite a few occasions this season where I've been drifting off watching Huddersfield let's put it that way Bristol City, going to say a little bit hit and miss. I think they have generally improved their overall play style. I think the last time I did this video, which was you know over a year ago, I had them in one of the bottom tiers. Weren't scoring a lot of goals then. Um, wins were quite hard to come by as well. But Pearson has found a little bit more of a consistent formula. Um, you know, Thinking of earlier in the season, love watching Semenyo. Um, more so now Scott, who's the main star in that side this season. But do, I enjoy, but do I enjoy watching Bristol City to the same degree of all those sides I've got above them? I wouldn't personally say so. Finishing it off then with Middlesbrough, who also play some great stuff. And if I'm honest, if I was to chuck any other side into that champagne football category, it probably would be Middlesbrough. My favourite two sides to watch personally in the championship probably would be Burnley and Middlesbrough under Michael Carrick. You know, if I'm taking the Wilder era into it as well, then I'm dropping them down the tier. But to have someone else in that category, for me personally, entertainment value. I've just loved the 
general story of Middlesbrough this season, how they've gone from, you know, bottom three candidates under Wilder to soaring up the championship with Carrick and the style of play on top of that as well, I think has been really exciting, really fluid stuff from them. Back to front, Shubrak Pom absolutely bagging in the goals. Cameron Archer up front, who I absolutely adore, and there's just so many goals and different ways of creating in this Middlesbrough side, which I quite like as well. So for me personally, that is how I'd rank championship teams this season in terms of their overall entertainment value. But I'd be interested to get your guys' verdict on this one down below. Would you agree, disagree with any of my picks there? Have I been kind, too harsh on anyone? Let me know down below. But apart from that, guys, that will now wrap it up for today's video. If you did go into enjoy, make sure to leave a like and do stick around for some regular championship content. And I'll see you all in the next one.